YouTube, it's your boy Curtis Seven. Welcome back to the Seven Show, lads. Here today, got my two special guests. First one, we got Chris on my right. Say hello to the people. How you going, everybody? And on my left, I got another disappointing, disappointing United fan in Edgar. <laughs> Say hello to the subscribers, Is mate. Everyone. All right, today, lads, we got a lot to get through. It's been a while since we've been on. There's been transfers. Mate, big, big, massive results this week. We got tipping later on, and at the end of the video, lads, we got your Q and A as well. But let's get first things first, lads. Let's talk about the results from the weekend. All right, let's get out the way with let's first things first. All right, Leicester City five, United three. Edgar, take it away, mate. It sounds like a FIFA result, doesn't it? It's uh, it's it's disappointing, mate. Yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> Where did it all go wrong? Just a defensive organization, man. It just was not. Is it a matter it of? Happen. Is it matter of the organization? Uh, organization or our it defenders was, was, aren't just good enough? No, I think our defenders are good enough. But it was just crucial mistakes. Like the first he was the other goal. Evans is in front of him. Raphael's behind him. Yeah, he pops in. And he's a monster. He's always going to bang that in. I know Raphael um, for a right back <clears> was just. <laughs> I know he was he was right in the penalty spot there, but your right back yeah. shouldn't be right and there. And then you got a typical Raphael mistake. He's a little undisciplined, takes down Vardy. Um, you got a Mata giving away possession or a bit too weak on the ball. You got that scramble where Cambi also scores five players in front, failed to close down one player. And Rooney, uh, Rooney wasn't happy at all. Rooney, oh, and I blasted him, and rightfully so, mate. Rooney doing, went off his cracker. Doing what the, doing the captain's job, mate? Yeah. What do you think of the uh, result? Like, uh, <laughs> for those who are new to my channel, Chris is a massive, massive Liverpool fan. He's a scouser at heart. Wanker. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, be honest. Be honest. Tell the truth about the game. How, how, um, how, how do you think the game panned out? It panned out exactly the way I wanted it to pan out. <laughs> Um, nah, United looked looked real good going forward yeah. and and scored some goals that I'll say at three one I was not I was not happy with <laughs> when I seen Di Maria put that goal oh, in I was like imagine this, this team's gonna this team's gonna kill it you know but then Angel sorry I was not talking about that goal, that goal mate Angel Di Maria's goal was just unbelievable That's sublime he looks he looks absolutely quality I oh, know I oh, know I remember when. Um, yeah, we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we were linked with him. I was making videos saying that oh, I think it's really worth that, you know, fifty million or whatever. Told you, man. <laughs> but I tell you what, he has just taken the Premier League by storm. I did not expect him to make nah. the transition the way he's had from you know yeah. from Real Madrid to United. Yeah. I just I didn't expect it to be so you know fluent the way it's been happening. But anyway, let's go on. Even um, with Falcao's cross to Van Persie, showed a bit. Like what? With what Falco has to offer? Oh, yeah. that's opposite foot. That was perfect. That <laughs> was. Even that volley. Did you see that volley? Yeah, the shot? yeah, yeah. Off the crossbar. Unlucky, unlucky. But uh, what do you guys reckon about um, Matter getting benched? Um, I thought to be honest, a lot of people weren't happy with it because he's got eight goals in ten games. But if you watch those ten games. It's fair criticism. He yeah. hasn't been sublime where, oh my God, he's undroppable. You know, he's been decent for us. Getting goals, getting forward, you know, eight goals in 10 games while you're playing average is pretty good. I told you that. You know, I told you that a couple of weeks ago. The, the goals, the games where he scored those goals were not big games. Mm. They're not, they're not. They're These not. games are now big games. Man, yeah. So. Still don't get me wrong. Um, and you know what? When he came off the bench, I thought, you know, right, you know, prove that Louis Van Hal, you're the man, it shouldn't be dropped. Mate, he gave away the ball oh. way off the pace and, mate, really costed us the goal. The, yeah. um, the yeah. fifth goal costed uh, Tyler Blackard that red card. Mm. Um, so, Edgar, you reckon it's the defensive organisation? Me, yeah. personally, I think the defence is just not good enough. I reckon Tyler Blackett is a pro as a prospect yeah, for the absolutely, future, absolutely. but he should be alongside a fucking experienced yeah. defender, and, yeah. not Chris Smalling or Johnny Evans. Yeah. I reckon Evans clearly not good enough, always injured. Phil Jones, I, I the only Phil Jones for me is quality. He can't give the pass though. He is just always injury prone, yeah, and it's so yeah, frustrating. And Chris Smalling, you know, another one's always injury prone as well. I think United just need someone with experience at the back. Uh, probably two experienced defenders. I, I don't, Hoover, like, 
I we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. We'll get to that in a second. But for me, it's not the organization. It's the personnel at heart. Yeah. But when we got the ball, boy, do we look scary. Oh, dude, going forward, I, wasn't that, I wasn't that upset with the game. Because for no. me, this game, for it's me, positive signs. hindered on our... Terrible, terrible refereeing decision. Like for that, yeah. is going to be the worst decision I've seen in years. Personally, bring back Howard, mate. I reckon. <laughs> I reckon that just, <laughs> that decision was shocking. I reckon. Like fair enough. I, I can understand. Rafa got suck it in, mate. I can understand. He didn't give the foul for yeah. the the, the uh, coming together. All right, fair enough. But then he gives a penalty two seconds later for like. Mate, a little bump, mate. Was it a bump? He, oh, he yeah, did a little. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you call that? A little fingernail. Scratch, on, a mate, how, how can you not call that a foul and then call that a foul? Yeah, I know. Man. Opinions? Uh, that's just probably the crowd got to him. The atmosphere got to the referee. I think that he would not pay that. Like, if that was. Yeah, that like, was the away team. It yeah, have, he wouldn't have paid that. Looking yeah. back on the, like the replay, he obviously realised he made a terrible mistake. Vardy wasn't even looking at Raphael. I mean, the ball when he um, yeah cleaned up. Um. But anyway, so it's getting on to other results. All right, let's talk about Chris's team. Let's talk about Liverpool against West Ham. That was uh, that was a very exciting game for Hammers fans. Um, take it away, Chris. Talk about the game. Your opinions. Um. Not many. <laughs> I've said it before, I think on this show about Gerard. He's just, he's not a defensive midfielder, and it's costing us big time. It's costing us time and time again. I don't, I don't blame Lovren and and Sacco. They've got no, they've got no help out of midfield mm. to stop the ball from coming in. Yeah. And um, it co- we started off slow, like it's two goals in seven minutes. We kind of got back into the game a little bit. Sterling scored. I was kind of. Optimistic. I was a bit optimistic, but I said to my I said to my brother in law before the game I thought it would be a draw. Mm. Um and I thought at two one I thought we might put, get get a goal back and get a draw. Um but then it just got caught out at the end, trying to push too far forward. Minule again out of position. Mm. He's not in real good form himself. No he's got no contest of on the bench of someone to push him for his spot, so that's probably why. Yeah, um, but uh, it was a sh- all around was a shocking performance. I can't find one good player for Liverpool. Maybe Moreno. That's it. Would you say it's fair criticism for Liverpool that they've been rocky over the last few weeks? Oh, they've been rocky. They've been rocky since the Chelsea game. I mean, if you count like oh, the, yeah, the last could. couple of games of the seasons, it, they've been real, real. It was the against sloppy. that that Champions League side in the Champions oh, League. Yeah. You just got the winner, yesterday. and then the week before that, who did you just play? Villa. Villa. And yesterday. Um, Oh, against Middlesbrough. Against Middlesbrough, yeah. That was that was a that was the a greatest great. penalty shootout ever. If the two goalkeepers yeah. got to have a shot. That was unreal. That penalty shootout. But um, do you guys think you're a bit over reliant on Sterling and Sturridge? That's a great question. I think I think we are. I think on Sterling definitely because yeah. he's too young. You're relying on a 19 year old to be putting that much pressure on. <clears throat> but but be fair to sorry to cut you off. Just to be fair to Rogers. I think he he put him on the bench two weeks ago yeah, yeah, against Villa. Because the England game, I think. You know, yeah, exactly right. And it, mate, he had no choice but oh, to no. stick him back on. But go on. But I don't get that with Rogers. Like that's, I, I'm a biggest Rogers lover. You're probably fine. But why would you start? Why would you rest Raheem Sterling against Villa, and then play him against Middlesbrough from yeah. the start <laughs> in in a in a Carling Cup game? You know, Maybe it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't. But I, I think we're we're really reliant. Our whole system is reliant on Sturridge playing with someone else with him up front. Like Sturridge, we looked we looked brilliant against Tottenham. Mm-hmm. Like Sturridge oh and yeah, Balotelli oh, yeah. together looked really good, and that's that. That's what we need. Sturridge is back this week. Hopefully, I think he's back. Yep, we need him more than anything. Yeah, like, yeah. Now this is going back a few episodes ago. I said that if Sterling doesn't fire, then that's when Coutinho needs to stand up. Markovic needs to stand up. Yep. Lalana needs to stand up. Balotelli needs to stand up. What are you going to say about Lalana? Lalana has been excellent. Honestly, yeah. Lalana. He was our best player for against Middlesbrough. He was real good against West Ham. He wasn't, wasn't even fit like any. Yesterday he was, he was our best player by a long shot. Talk to us about Balotelli. What are your what are your opinions on his start to yeah. his Liverpool career? Hmm. It hasn't been 100 miles per hour, but I think he's been good. He's been working. Like he's been tracking back. He's defending at corners. He's been active on Twitter real good. Yeah. <laughs> he's been a bit stupid there, but 
Yeah. That's just Balotelli. But um, yeah. I think you can see that. Like when his hold up play is second to none. He, yeah. His quality with with hold up. That's why when Sturridge comes into the team, I think yeah. he'll, Balotelli will be a better player. Yep. Yeah. You saw that against Tottenham. Yeah. Against Tottenham, he looked, he almost scored with his second touch for Liverpool yeah, on yeah. his debut. The header. Yeah. How All right. Oh, go on. Go how on. good, good was it? Just to finish off. How good was it to um, West Ham goals? Oh. On Malfatano on that chip. You reckon that was a cross or a chip? That was a cross. Cross, yeah, cross. cross. Definitely a cross. He claimed it though. Good on him. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it, you see those uh, every now and again. But lads, biggest game of the week, no doubt, City against Chelsea. What an unbelievable game. That was unreal. Poetic justice, mate. Mate, that was a game. I tipped Chelsea for this game because I thought it was going to be a repeat yeah. of last year's game. But Chelsea were going to go to the Eddie Head. They are going to boss it. But boy, that couldn't be any further from the yeah, truth. Especially the way Chelsea have been playing this season. It's been definitely surprising. Yep. Mate, <sighs> City were just on, on song for this game. Yeah. Probably un- very unlucky not to, get, to grab all three points. They were up for it, man. Yeah. Um, your opinions of the game? Yeah, it was. I think City City should have got the win, hmm. but um, yeah, yeah. I think Chelsea they haven't really played anyone like that good. This was their first big test, you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I oh, agree with that. Count, maybe Everton, you give it a pass. Everton's though. not really that good at the moment. Yeah, Everton Everton nah. are real struggling at the minute. They lost at Crystal Palace on the weekend, <laughs> yeah. but uh, Chelsea. They are they're, they're doing more than enough to beat the teams. They're, they're yeah. convincing. Mate, Diego Costa is in such good form. I read this stat the other day. I'm not so, too sure if it's uh, true. Fernando Torres' first uh, yeah. 44 games scored seven goals. Diego Costa's first seven goals did it in four games. Mm. You know, so that just shows you what unbelievable form Diego Costa was in. Pimping. Should he have sent, uh, been sent off for that game? Grab Zabaleta uh, by the neck. And even Zabaleta sent the, out a tweet the, that I retweeted. The photo is worse than it looks. But if you look at the replay, it's just... It's not quite a grab. It's not. It's not. I, I wouldn't have sent him off. Yeah. But uh, anyways, against the runner play, Mourinho, would you call a genius? Broke in uh, his luxury man sure. off the bench. Sherla got mm. the goal. Mate, yeah. when that went in, I was like, no way. Mourinho's done it again. But uh, not long after that, Frank Lampard for City scored the equaliser. <laughs> Man, that was I was unbelievable. A I wasn't expecting that. That's <laughs> how would you feel? Oh yeah. Can you good. imagine Gerrard scoring a goal against Liverpool like that? Yeah. If he was playing for like United, that would be <laughs> a heartbreaker, wouldn't it? Uh, it would be. It would be. <laughs> but he done well, like to kind of keep it in check. I, I when he when that ball hit the net, he just like wanted to run, and you're saying. Oh, yeah, and I think after the yeah. game, he was, went up to the Chelsea fans. Yeah, and and, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was great. Mangala cool. made his debut. Yeah, yeah that he, was a drink. He looks a monster, man. Yeah, he does, he does. Bang. Yeah, we'll Pretty see. Huge. Yeah, we'll see how it, that pans out. But uh, other than interesting results, guys, well, obviously we already covered that Crystal Palace defeating uh, Everton. Lukaku looks good. Two goals in yeah. a few games. Um, West Brom beating Tottenham. Hmm. Yeah, what? <laughs> I man, it's been it was a crazy week for results. Crazy week. Yeah, killer. Even it, uh, even Arsenal grabbed three points against. <laughs> I'm only joking, Arsenal fans. I know Arsenal fans are giving me stick because I predicted them to finish fifth, but will. um, you tipped them to finish in the top four. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, other than that, guys, Southampton beating Swansea one oh, nil. Oh man, that killed me. They man. are flying for a team that was guaranteed relegation before the season started. What a turnaround. But anyways, lads, let's get into the tipping. As you can see on the screen down below, it was a shocking week for all of us. Ego got one, Chris got one tip, and I got two tip. Terrible, terrible week for us last week. I think it was terrible for everyone. Do you remember what you got right? Uh, The two ones I got right were uh, QPR and Stoke, and I got um, the... um, I think I tipped um, the Southampton. Um, no, no, sorry. Nah. The, it was the new. Uh, it was the Newcastle Hull game. Sorry, Newcastle Hull and uh, QPR Stoke. The two draws. A, I was gonna say that's a master stroke if you got Southampton. <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't that one. It was the Newcastle because I thought Newcastle at home. They suck. <sighs> it's a bit harsh, yeah. <laughs> but um, overall, guys, I'm on twenty five, stretching that lead out ever so further. <laughs> Painful, mate. But uh, coming second is Edgar, and Chris is just behind him oh, mate. on 17. You, you've out-tipped me every round, mate. 
Yeah, but anyways, lads, <laughs> let, let's get to some transfer uh, rumours. This is fresh out the gates just today. All right, now this one, oh, this has been going on for a long, long time, but it's recovered the surface over the last few weeks, and it's just gaining momentum, 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 and it's getting to the point, lads, where there's going to be a banner on the back of a plane going over Villarreal this weekend. Bring home Ronaldo to Manchester United. What are your thoughts on the rumours, Edgar? Uh, the rumours, they've always been there. He's always said, maybe in the future. He um, keeps he keeps saying, uh, I'd, I'd love to return. But... The biggest tease, man. Don't worry. I know, definitely. Loves it. Um, but in terms of the banner, stupid, man. Like He, he scored two hat-tricks in four days. Yeah. Um, but I think Adam McCall said it the best. If you've seen his video, I mean, it's just childish. What do you say? Uh, it's, it's small time. He said it. He called it small time. The the banner. Yeah. It, okay. It's, yeah. It's yeah. Just um, and you're feeding his ego, so yeah, that's he, he loves it, man. So and it's not going to help. You know, you're going to get a couple of Twitter photos. It's not really going to do anything, man. Yeah. What do you? What if do he you wants th- to come, he'll come, and that's full stop. Oh, that's exactly right. He still he just signed a, a four year or five year yeah, deal exactly. last year. You know, so he's one year into that. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. But your thoughts? I think he's finished anyway. <laughs> <laughs> nah, seriously. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a little bit of a story. The, yesterday, I was watching the um, Carling Cup game, Liverpool against Middlesbrough, and um, at the same time, Real Madrid was playing oh, yeah, 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 Elche, yeah, yeah. In, and we were switching through the games at half time. Yep. And checking live score, seeing Ronaldo scored. My cousin's going, Ronaldo scored, Ronaldo scored again, <laughs> Ronaldo scored again. And then my cousin, who's a big Liverpool fan like me, he um, he said, I really hope he doesn't go back to United. And I said. <laughs> Yeah, me too, because that would petrify the shit out of me. Because if he goes back to United, anything's possible, man. He's yeah. humble. He's Darling, that good at the moment. Yeah, it's humble. a fairy tale that everyone wants to see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this big bold statement. Go on, you guys it. know do I it. love Cristiano Ronaldo. I've been watching him ever since Shame forever. Right. For me, this is my opinion. A lot of people disagree with this. Cristiano Ronaldo, in my opinion, is the best player that's ever played the game ever. Better than Pelé, better than anyone that I've seen, in my opinion. A lot of people disagree with that, but for me, in my own eyes, this guy is big, he is strong, scores with his left yeah. foot, scores with his right foot, can head the ball, can dribble. The most complete player This ever. guy has everything. If you were to build a robot on the best football player, you would build him like Cristiano Ronaldo. This guy's got it all. Pace, you name it. The looks as well, mate. Yeah, he's got, <laughs> yeah he does. He's got the girls as well. But uh, that's just my opinion. Now, about him coming back to United, I'd love to see that happen. I've, I've said this a million times before. If he yeah. ever goes back to United, I would back buy to- the first ticket back to England Mate, I would parachute into the stadium if I couldn't get a ticket. <laughs> I would somehow get my way into that stadium to be there. But realistically, I can't see it happening. No. we got to remember, lads, he's going to be 30 in uh, February. Yeah. But b- not by no means. This guy is going to be 33, 34, still scoring goals for fun, in my opinion. Yeah. Probably slow down a little bit, you know. We could already start to see injuries are creeping into his game a little bit. Because his whole, his whole career, he's never, never. had an injury. Never. Um, but I'd love to see him back at United. Yeah. If he comes, is he going to wear the number seven? Is Dean Maria yeah. going to give that up? <clears throat> He'll give it up. Out <laughs> respect. Yeah, but... Um, all right, now the next rumour that has been circling around the last few weeks has popped up again tonight. Raheem Sterling to Real Madrid to replace Ronaldo coming back to United. Piss off, get him, man. Nah, but I mean, <laughs> no, it's all seriousness. What, what are your thoughts on the uh, rumour, Chris? Let me just tell you, Raheem Sterling's the best player I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, would, I don't think it's going to happen just yet. If I, I pray to God it doesn't. Because at the moment, he's we can't afford to get rid of a player at, at this age. He, They're not going to bid ridiculous money for him anyway. Oh, uh, I, re- uh, I don't think they're one not. Real Madrid, if you have noticed, James Rodriguez. Real Madrid every year they spend crazy money on like one player. player. Yeah. Every year for the last, you got to look at the last five six years. Yeah. You know, it was Ronaldo, Modric, Modric, Bale, James. Like they didn't need Rodriguez. Why didn't they? They just won the Champions League. Di Maria. Isco. They spent sixty something million on James Rodriguez. There was no need for that. If Ronaldo does go, let's just say he does go. For example, yeah. Why wouldn't they bid? You know, eighty million to Liverpool for Raheem Sterling. Oh, if they if they build if they bid 
were to bid eighty million pounds right now for sterling, they'd be stupid not to take it. Yeah. For a nineteen year old, eighty million pounds, no one's gonna say no to that. It, yeah, I know, I know. Like you can build you can again buy another four or five players with that. Yeah. You've got to yeah. think of like you know Tottenham. Tottenham, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the funny thing is, do you remember the, the last time we recorded this show? I sat down there and I told you, imagine if Sterling actually went to Madrid. Do, yeah. Do you recall that conversation? Kind of, kind yeah. of. But, um. But yeah, yeah, but the only way that Sterling's going to Madrid is if Ronaldo returns. That, that's the only way I see him going. Yeah, which, you know, it could happen. I'm not saying this season, but. Two three years down the track could happen. Now this this is a very very strong rumor that's come out the yeah. last few days is Gerard PK back to United. Your thoughts, Edgar? I'd love to see that happen, man. Um, yeah, we need all, it to happen. Although <laughs> apparently PK is just a mess right now. Um, I think Pep Guardiola came out a year ago or so saying PK is done. He's past his best. Really? Yeah, he's he's, just, very, he's still like twenty six, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, but he's saying that. Off the pitch, that, yeah. that's what his problems like. Ah, uh, with Shakira. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> that's a good problem to have, man. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, look, he called it the extracurricular activities. That yeah, he does. He does. He's gonna keep yeah. up with the, he's the wife, f- uh, fly around the world and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, look, apparently, look, th- that that could be exactly what Pico needs to spark his career again. Yeah. But you can see that. He has declined over the last two years, and he's not quite the best anymore. I can't say I've personally seen that because I haven't watched too much of Barcelona. Yeah, but every time I see him or hear about him, it's not for a good reason. No, oh, for me, it's I'll always a good reason. Yeah. Gerard PK. Um, do you know much about PK? Yeah, not that I know much about him, but I, I know he's a very good footballer. Yeah, that's <laughs> off. I think about two years ago, he's hands down the best centre back. Now it's probably. A Thiago Silva. Well, he's, he's, he's Barcelona's best centre-back by far. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know? They, they don't really have anyone else. Uh, um, a left-back and an Arsenal reject. Yeah. Uh, all right, now, this is... this is uh, Bullshit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> all right, there's rumours come out today. Chris is not quite happy with, you can't nah. tell. Smack talk, man. Yeah, I'm not happy with this either. Smack I'm, talk. I'm, I'll be gutted if this happens. Jurgen Klopp to replace Brendan Rodgers to sort out that defence. If this happens, I'll parachute into Anfield <laughs> and I won't pull the rope. <laughs> um, so what's, yeah, being serious, you have yeah, serious opinions? If anyone was to replace Rodgers, if I had a choice, I would choose Jurgen Klopp because yeah. that bloke's just cool. Yeah. yeah, he is one cool bloke. You see uh, that hoodie he was wearing at the Champions yeah, League? Oh. Just, and he just slapped that, his, his, um, his uh, striker with the coming off. They were, they were winning and he was happy with him. Instead of giving him a high five, he slapped him across the face. <laughs> just a big smile. And he's so like, cool. That's yeah, but, um, no, there, there's nothing, it's, too, it's too early to say Rogers is out. Yeah. Yeah, you know, After all he's done, he deserves a little bit more time and, after yeah. finishing second with the squad he had or with Suarez. <laughs> yeah. And being but, on uh, pile of Tony we'll see, how, we'll see how we go in a few weeks' time. And see yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, he would. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Rogers. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think he's well, well respected in the uh, in the football community. But Brendan Rogers is like I think like the, in the top what uh, twenty for the longest serving managers in the in England right now. That's, that is unbelievable. That just shows the. It, uh, crazy go on. It is. One thing about Rogers, there, there was a, there was a like he played his fifty. His what was it? His fifty. He had his fiftieth win. Okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he had it in the same amount of time as, as Rafa Benitez. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that, yeah. Frankly, it was equal with like the best three managers of all time. Yeah. Now, Doug Leach as well, wasn't it? Yeah, you, but you look at the team Rogers had when he took over Liverpool. Oh, compared to Compared now. to what Benitez took over Liverpool and what the other coaches took over Liverpool. They had better teams. Yeah, yeah. Rogers took over Liverpool for a shocking yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, you know, and to get the to the get rubble. the equal the record amount of wins, like 50, that quickly. Yeah. You can't just say straight away, three weeks later, oh yeah, he's going to be replaced by a club. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. Nah. If you were to say uh, a criticism about Brendan Rodgers, because I know you're a big fan of him, what would it be? Uh, look, I, I, I love the way, he, the way he speaks. I don't know, like maybe... Some... A couple, like starting Lucas and Barini, that, 
That's one. That's one problem. That's like, a yeah, but that for me, you need to take the risk because what if Barini scores and then he just goes on this massive spree and it sparks his career again? It's like, oh, geez, like, you know, Brendan Rodgers getting the best out of Barini. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think nah. anything is going to spark <laughs> Barini his career. And Lucas is he's past it as well. But but I'm not sure, mate. What he sees at training. What we say, we don't see at training. True. I've seen a video of, like a, a vine of Barini scoring a top corner cracker. Mm. You know, and he said to the cameraman, "Did you get that?" <laughs> now, if you're good enough, you don't need to say to the cameraman, "Did you get that?" Because it should be happening more often. True. Very true. Very true. Did you get that? <laughs> now, one uh, topic I want to talk about, guys, and it's been happening a lot, even to the fact where uh, BBC UK tweeted me back about this. Mate, there's so many comparisons now between David Moyes and Louis Van Gaal right now after five games. For me, it is just crazy. Crazy. Well, you said it there, mate. Five games. Exactly. Full stop. Five games. Uh, give us your opinions, Edgar. There's no story there at all. It's just five games. Because five David games. Moyes, after five games, was like in the top seven. Yeah. And Van Gaal, where are we now? I haven't said, can't remember the table. 12th or something? Yeah, look, compare it a top 20, top 30 maybe. But top five, they're just fishing for a report, man. Ah, oh, I there's know. No, there's no story there at all. Let's be honest. We, we've just had the one game against Leicester on the yeah. weekend where Falcao just started. And again, he hasn't even played 90 minutes. Di Maria hasn't even played 90 minutes. Yeah. You know? So, we haven't even got our defence sorted. Phil Jones is not be back. Like, it is crazy talk. But, you know, the, the one good thing that might be coming is... um. Luke Shaw to make his debut. Yes. In the coming weeks. Yes. We'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that in a second. Um, what are your thoughts of the uh, comparison between Moyes and Van Hal? I don't know. Like, it's hard to compare. He's not going <laughs> It's hard to compare. Like, it's too it's too early, like you said. Um, yeah. That's the, if United, like, it goes back to the defence. If United had a bit of defence, I think Van Hal could have this team flying. Yeah. Now, whoever's fault that is that they've gone with that defence, that's who it comes down to, I'm, yeah. I reckon. Yeah. You know, but it's too early to say. I think you have to finish higher than last season with this with this attack. This yeah. attack's up there. It's up there, like, with everybody, with every big team yeah, in, in the, the world. League. Yeah. Oh, in, the, in the world, if you want to say it. Yeah, it on is. On paper. Oh, yeah, yeah on paper. They put yeah. it all together. Yeah, okay. yeah. Which, that's why I said about that foul character, Van Persie Cross, because people, people saying, oh, they're going to get in each other's way. Hmm. That cross just proves they're not going to get in each other's way because that was that was beautiful like movement. <sighs> that was unbelievable. Yeah. Um. So you say about the defense, okay, Edgar? Mm-hmm. Um. Actually, no. We'll, we'll get to that later on. We'll get to that later on. Yeah. All right. Let's get to this week's uh, Premier League previews, guys. Uh, ten matches coming up this week. Some cracking games coming up, and the first game that we're going to get to talking about is the derby: Liverpool versus Everton yes. at Anfield. <laughs> going to be a cracking game that these derbies are uh, the bomb these derbies are all there's always a red card yeah, in this derby like always that. um give us your predictions Edgar actually Chris you go in detail about the game first then we'll give you our predictions in detail I hope Pepsi FIFA's watching this <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I'm happy to be playing Everton at this time yeah because like, they're not looking that good. We don't look that good either, yeah. which is which is a, like it's gonna it's even bonus. out a little yeah. bit. But but I think if Sturridge starts, uh, which is supposed to be a full training, I think we are almost back to a, a pre, he's got a you can choose a real a real strong team for this game. Yeah, and I expect a, a Liverpool win. Balotelli to start. Balotelli to start, hundred percent. Matthew scores. Yeah, uh, I think Balotelli will start. Yeah, Sturridge will start. Sterling. Yeah. I'm going to go with a Liverpool 2-1 uh, win in this game. I just think that they'll be too strong for Everton. Everton, their defence is the one Shambles, thing mate. they've always had consistency about them is their defence. Their defence looks terrible. It almost looks mm-hmm. like United quality at the minute. And Tim Howard, he's a quality keeper. Yeah, he's had a stinker on the weekend, man. I know, I know. So, 2-1 for Liverpool for me. 3-0. 3-0. Edgar? 2-0. 2-0. Okay then. All right, second game, lads. We've got Chelsea at Stamford Bridge to Aston Villa. Who Aston Villa have been half decent. Mm. It was half just decent. Half decent. They've been very well. They've okay, been, okay, okay, okay. No. They have exceeded all expectations. Yeah, yeah, they have, they have. But they they did get spanked on the weekend. Yeah, That's exactly. why I said half. Yeah. Uh, you know. They would have taken where they are. Oh yeah, oh, yeah definitely, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, what can I say? Roy Keane's, you know. 
regalvanize that team. They look good. Tom Cleverley is playing unbelievable football. Man, mm. that, you know, pfft, who would have thought, huh? <laughs> but um, Stanford Bridge at home, let's be real, lads. It's going oh, yeah. to be 4-0, I reckon, personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably 4 no, Chelsea are too I, good at home. I'm going for 1-0 here for Chelsea, man. I, I think they might have to grind this one out. Yeah, Ron Vlaas, he's still out. I, think, I'm not, yeah, I don't think he's that, back yet. That, that's maybe what will cause a bit of... Um, it, does, it, it doesn't really matter. Like, if, you, if you watch the game against Liverpool, like the, the just yeah. that that back four, like Kieran Clark, solid. On paper, I looked at I think Sender. Rubbish. We're gonna smack him over the park. Yeah. You put Mordi. Titus Bramble in that back four, and they still would have had a clinch. That the way they were just organised. Yeah. The... Sender probably should have got a red card in that Liverpool game. Yeah, he should. He should have. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> anyways, but anyways. <laughs> Crystal Palace at home to Leicester City. Now, I'm so looking forward to this game. It's not even funny. Crystal Palace, hot and cold. Hot and cold. Um, But in good form as well. Uh, We're talking about uh, Neil Warnock, how he's just, you know, (laughs) destined for relegation. But he's doing such a great job for Crystal Palace. And a way win in Liverpool against um, Everton. Everton. And now Leicester City, who... Let's be honest, lads. But even before they beat United, they were in amazing form. Let's be honest, mate. They almost uh, got a result against uh, Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. They got a result against um, Arsenal. Mate, they're in fantastic form. This game, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to have to tri- uh, tip a draw. I'm just going to have to tip a draw. Probably uh, probably a high-scoring draw. Probably 3-3. Something ridiculous. I'm going to go have a list to win here. I think they'll follow up on their good work against Betty United. Yep. And um, like you said, Crystal Palace hot and cold. I expect them to be cold this time around. Yeah. Um, Chris? I'll go the other way from Edgar. I think coming off a big win like um, off against United, they might be a little bit complacent in this game. And Yeah, I can see I that. They could be caught out. I think Palace will win this game. Oh, I see you too, Palace. All right, then. All right. Uh, Hull City at the KC Stadium against Manchester City. Um, this game, uh, it's going to be hard to tip uh, any points for Hull, but even though Hull did look good against Newcastle, those two crackers they scored at St. James's Park, that Yelovich goal, whew, my oh, word, mate. what a goal. Some FIFA stuff there. Um, if they could pull that out of the bag again this weekend, that would be more than welcomed against City, um, but I think we're gonna have to, I'm going to have to pick a City win here. Yep, City. City. Yep, my question is yeah, City, City all around. All right, uh, United, we're at home at Old Trafford against West Ham, who West Ham are in really great form as well, beating uh, Liverpool. It's going to be, um, I was about to say, it's going to be a difficult game. Come on, we're talking about West Ham here. It shouldn't be a difficult game with the personnel we got. I'm gonna, I'll am let you guys tip first this time. When it comes to the United game, you don't even have to ask me. I'm just going to tip United every oh, time. Oh, yeah, definitely. Every but every it's time. like, how's this game going to pan oh, out? Oh, I have the game's going to pan out. Uh, Let's go a little bit into detail about this game, because we've got a lot of United subscribers. Yep. <coughs> is Mata going to be starting this game? I hope so. Um, That's not the question I ask. Yeah. Is, is he? All right. Uh, no, I don't think so. He's still going to be benched. Van Persie's still going to keep his spot. Yep. Okay, fair enough. And what about the back? Any defensive changes? Yeah, you I think Rojo will slot into left centre back, and you'll see a debut for Luke Shaw. Yeah, I, I, spot on, spot on. I agree with that. Uh, Chris, uh, what the, the result for result? Oh, United West Ham? United will win. Um, they're coming off like a loss, obviously, but their last game at Old Trafford they were pretty yeah. good, so oh, very good. And you got to bounce back, man. You have yeah, to. You have to bounce back. Yeah. At home as well, man. I think they'll dominate, like, this will be different to Leicester. They'll dominate, like, yeah, you know. Oh, Le- to be fair, against Leicester, I know this sounds stupid, but we did dominate. Yeah. yeah it but was up this, until that referee decision. I, I don't think they're going to come at you. They're going to they're gonna let, get, let you have the ball. They're going to be dropping deep and yeah. deeper and deeper and deeper. And unless they can get an early goal, that, that, could, that could change a lot. But I think United's going to... Oh, yeah. let, let Di Maria have the ball, man. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm going to pick... I'm going to just go for... Uh, might be biased, but I'm going to say a 4-1 That's win good. to United, good man. in my opinion. All right, Southampton at home to Coopia. Southampton 2 Southampton, deal. bing. <laughs> Pele. I reckon Southampton 4 or 5 nil actually. Pele to fucking bang on him. What did I say about Coopia? Yeah, you called it. You That's called it. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Coopia struggling. They yeah. just haven't bought well at the back, have they? 
They got a lot of money, but uh, anyways, next game, we got Sunderland against Swansea. Uh, this time it's at the Stadium of Light. Sunderland up and down this season, yeah. very unpredictable. Got, Same as Swansea, they're uh, up and down. They've not their first win yet, have they? I uh, don't think so. No, I don't think so. But they're playing not bad football. Yeah, I'm gonna go for Sunderland to get their first win. No, I'm going for a Swansea win away. Wow. Okay. Gomez to score. Gomez. Bernie's suspended mm. for this one. Correct. Yes. I'm gonna have a draw. That's Dr- got draw written all over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, another derby in this week, lads. We've got the North London derby. Arsenal at the Etihad, um, the Emirates Stadium. <laughs> it's a little derby. It's a, it's a, who cares, though? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Arsenal at the Emirates against Tottenham. I love this derby. Yeah. This, this derby is fantastic. I love all derbies. This derby, for me, is going to be one of the best in England. What's going to happen, lads? Goals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Always, there's normally always goals. Yeah, well, Beck. Season, you reckon Welbeck well, well got off the mark yeah. against Aston Villa? He's, Great to see. He's looked good, mate. Yeah. I think he's been playing well. Yeah, he has. He has. And I hope, uh, mate, I've been telling you this all along. Yeah. For years, Welbeck's a gun. But no one listened to me. Neither did Van yeah. Hal. But we move on. <laughs> <sighs> mate, mate, Derby's, Derby's draw crazy results. Yeah. And I wouldn't yeah. be surprised... If Tottenham got up and won this one, oh, I yeah. wouldn't be surprised. Where no one's backing him, Pochettino's. Are you going to back him, Curtis? <sighs> Arsenal fans aren't happy with me lately, so I'm going to tip a draw. I'm going to tip a draw. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for the, an Arsenal easy win. Yeah, I'm going to go three nil. Yeah, three nil. Bit of yeah, spanking. I think they'll win easily. Um, I'm going for a two nil Arsenal. I just want to explain myself before I talk about Arsenal. I th- I think they're not in the greatest form ever. All right, they're spanked with uh, Aston Villa. All right, you know, let's forget about that. Mate, for me, they haven't been playing well whatsoever. And the big talk is about Ozil. I want to get your opinions about oh Ozil. For me, he is not the best um, number 10 they have at Arsenal. He come with a big price tag, world-class, unknown, uh, well-known, sorry, but he grabbed all those assists at Real Madrid. He's, all you have to do is put a ball to Ronaldo and he'll get you an assist. Do you know what I mean? Mm. He's come into the Premier League like a house on fire. Quality play he is. I'm not denying that. But he is off the pace compared to what we expected him to be. Even Arsene Wenger has the same opinion because at the minute, Ozil is starting on the left. You know, and you've got players like Ramsey, Cazola. They're all the ones central. Why is Ozil being pushed out wide? Because you, you have to run both ways in the Premier League. Yeah. Exactly. You can't just be an attacker in the, in the, in the English Premier League. But by saying that, they had Robert Perez on the left wing who did exactly the same thing as Ozil. Got up hardly any coming back. Yeah, but where do you fit Sanchez, Oxlade-Chamberlain? Yeah. Oh, look, but look, they played Ozil centrally and he got an assist and a goal, so... Exactly, but that was because... Um, I think that shows what he can give you. But look, you can't expect a player to always be in form, so... And just coming off a World Cup, yeah, but, you can't expect it. But we're, to, we're talking about 42 million I, I know, club record you, signing. You can't expect the player to always be informed, but yeah. you can expect the player to always work and and, yeah. and track. And you can see, yeah. but, but you're just from, lazy. Do you yeah. rem- do you remember? Uh, it was against City last year, where Murder Saka. Yeah, um, yeah, gave it to him. Yeah, gave yeah. it to him for not going, mate. That just shows you how selfish Ozil is. And uh, have you have you noticed Sanchez the way he plays? And oh, he's chalk and cheese. He's making tackles in the the corner flag, at yeah. the defensive corner flag. He he's unbelievable to watch. Yeah, but that's it, the thing. It, it, he's Ozil, a great signing. Ozil is, a, Ozil is a luxury player, man. And you get those kind of players that don't want to track back, man. And, yeah. that, and that's a gamble that Arsene Wenger took. So he's got to yeah, live he, with he that would, now, man. He would have knew that. He yeah, he's got to live with that now, man. Yeah. Uh, so that's my opinion. All right, on to West Brom against Burnley. Uh, this has got uh, crap relegation all over it. Really, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't want to say that to my West Brom fans and Burnley fans, but it's going to be a fight, lads. And these are the games you're going to need to win if you want to escape relegation. Let's be real. But in saying that, West Brom fans, you got a great win at Tottenham. Oh, yeah, so. Right. I'm going to have to say West Brom to continue their good form. Yep, West Brom here as well. West Brom for me too. Sorry, Burnley fans. Um, Stoke <laughs> against Newcastle. Another cracking game because these... Mm. Th- another two clubs, mate, just in the in the doghouse, basically. Just in, in terrible form. Mm. Um, Stoke. Which Stoke is going to turn up in the day? Yeah. Which Newcastle is going to turn up in the day? This can be... I'll flip a coin because I'm, I'm, I can't predict this one. I'm going to do a worldwide um, prediction here. Yeah? I think this will be party's last game. 
Whoa. Strike to the win. Yep. Party sacked. Wow. Gonna get sacked in the morning. All right, Chris. The best chance. I think it's a <laughs> draw. Draw? Yeah, yeah, I think draws got written all over this one. That's it for our predictions, lads. Let's get into our Q&A, lads. Now, um, our questions this week... Uh, by the way, I just want to say, our questions, lads... When we ask to do a Q&A, make sure you ask the questions about relative uh, current Premier League questions or even fo- general footballing questions that are uh, current in this day and age. But anyways, lads, first question comes from a fellow YouTuber. His name is Jared HD, and he says, Which clubs have surprised and disappointed you f- so far this season? That's a great question. For me, let me go first. Biggest club to surprise me this season? Has to be Southampton. Wow. Just not expecting the season they've had. And the, this, the team to disappoint me so far this season, United. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's me personally. I'm very similar. Like, I, I think um, either Villa and Southampton, I'm sitting the fence to say two teams, and I'm going to go with my own team it's as, good dis- shout. as disappointing. Yeah, Liverpool. good shout. I'll go with, um, yeah, United as most disappointing. Yeah, Liverpool's. Yeah. But, um, I'd say Southampton as well, but just to change it up a bit, I'm going to go Leicester. Yes. Um, I, I'd heard that they've played some good football, but... Good call. Man, they have blown me away with almost beating Chelsea, beating us, and playing well in just about every other game, man. Mate, they yeah. unbelievable. Good yeah. shout-out, man. Good shout-out. All right, next question. Now, I can't um, pronounce your name properly, so don't yell at me if I uh, now stuff this one up. Um, yeah, now full. All right, now for us... All right, this is for you, Edgar. All right, the best realistic defender for Manchester United to buy in January. Realistic, yeah, the key word. Realistic. Don't say Hummels because yeah, let's know. be honest, that's not really nah, realistic. Not What's the best realistic defender we could go with? Jeez. Well, you'd have to say PK. He's PK? the only one that we really linked with. But I don't think I'm going to buy anyone in January, to be honest. I think I think the the best realistic defender yeah, we right could now. buy. Is Ron Vla? That's exactly who I was gonna say. Yeah, because he's he's Dutch. He's Dutch as well, you know. And I think is that um, the is, is that the age for experience? That sounds realistic because if he comes back to this Villa team, starts playing some decent football, carries on his World Cup for, I could see. And who's gonna say no? Like yeah, exactly. Maybe, unless Roy Keane doesn't want him to go, <laughs> you know. But, uh, yeah, but he, and he would be at the right price. Yeah. You know, it won't be crazy Pre- money. Premier League experience. You know, yeah. he's never really been that good in the Premier League, to be honest. No, he hasn't. But the World Cup he had was brilliant. Oh, he was if unbelievable. He, if he can, if he can carry that over, yeah, because you know it's a different game. All you know to need is just a bit of experience. Premier League experience. Yeah, and that helps. That helps. That exactly helps. He, um, he's at the right age. At United at the minute, all right, we've got our most experienced defender is Johnny Evans. Johnny and Evans. Mate, like six months ago, we had Ferdinand, Evra, Vidic as our experienced defenders. Now, we've got um, Evans, most experienced. Now, he's injured. Smalling's, Smalling's the Jones. second most experienced defender we got. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I expect um, Ron Vlaar, maybe Strutman, if his knee pulls up this summer... I don't expect too many signings in January. If it was to be two, it would be them two. Strootman and... Um, Ron Vla. Yeah, Ron Vla. All right, next question. This comes from um, at Remy Beats. And he asks, guys, who's been the biggest person to surprise you in the EPL this year? Which um, player has surprised you the most this year in the Premier League? There's been a few. There's been... Um, I'll give you probably two. Go give um, us two. Give us two. Naismith, because I smashed him. Yes, you did. Um, and he's actually been a shining light for Everton. Yeah. Uh, Ulloa. Everton? You mean uh, Leicester? No, yeah. Uh, no, biggest person to surprise him in EPL. Who'd you say? Ulloa. What happened? Oh, you said Everton. Yeah, 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 yeah. From Leicester, you mean? Yeah, yeah. And um, probably Di Maria. I did not expect him to start that well. Three players. I don't say Costa because I was sure. Yeah, he, yeah. He would, Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, go, Chris. Oh, mate. Um, Jamaica, you think about yeah, it? Yeah, go. I got no idea. All right. Uh, one is Tadic from Southampton. Yeah. He looks amazing. Um, another player that surprised me as well from, um, obviously, Di Maria, because Di Maria, I wasn't expecting to be that good. Mm. I know. I know he's world class and all that stuff, but. 
I didn't expect him to be at the level that he's at. Like, I think he's already topped the fantasy league points. Oh, I games. bought him in first week. Yeah. I've already bought him in first week, Captain. <laughs> I got Falcao too as well, by the way. Really? But anyway, yeah, I got... <laughs> um, uh, surprised me as well. Uh, yeah, like you said, you lower. Vardy. <laughs> no one expecting that performance. Um, there's been a few. There's been a few this season. Yeah. Um, I, was, I had one in my head. I just forgot about it. Uh, what about you, Chris? I'm going to say, because of my predictions earlier on, I'll say Fabregas. Because I, I, yeah. for me, I thought he was going to be a little bit, a little bit too used to the Spanish league. Maybe a little bit. He's been he's been out of the English game a while. Was slower in Spain. I thought it was going to take him a long time to get back into it, but he's he's been excellent. Hasn't been the so, case, has it? No, nah, and that that's probably my. That, I'm surprised by Fabregas. Yeah. All right. What about if we flip the question? Biggest disappointment. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you've probably thought about that. You go. Yeah, I <laughs> Biggest disappointment. Maybe Yaya Toure. Oh, that's a good call. That's a good call. Rubbish. Right. Uh, not, not rubbish, but, but to below be, par. Can I just say something about Yaya Toure? The he's, brother thing? He, he's getting so much criticism about this season, how poor form he is and all that fuss of a big deal he made about the birthday cake incident and stuff like that. He came out and said it was a joke, didn't he? His brother just died. Yeah, I know. His brother just died. That oh, fuck yeah, that's bad. Yeah. That's Sorry about my language. That, that's right. That <laughs> is um, that any human being that yeah. would that oh, would yeah. you know that, <laughs> mate. Even if you came out and said I I want to retire, I don't want to play football anymore. I would say fair enough. Yeah. I'd say fair enough, yeah, mate. Right. But you know, I know it sounds a bit harsh, but you'd have to take time off if you if you really need it if it's affecting you. Because you need to get away from it, man. You need to get your head clear yeah, first, and you, then you, you can take enjoy. you take time off your absolutely. Job, and so it's the same thing. And, and Man City's gonna let you, man. They're not. Who are they to say no? You're gonna stay here and play football? No, they wouldn't. Exactly. You show some compassion, and I think that's what you should do. I still think you should do that right now. Get, get yourself right. Come back, and explode, man. Yeah, good call. You got one. Disappointing players. Dan Lovren. You're Ooh, not happy with him. Nah. And if you go back a couple of weeks, you say how much I thought he was good. You, you you didn't say he was so good. You just said I said he looked he looked good. He looked like uh, the, like a he can organise a defence. Yeah, I don't know, mate. I, I've 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 kind of lost faith <laughs> faith in Lovren completely. Yeah. Um, Next Jamie Carragher, boys. Sorry, uh, Liverpool uh, fans, if you if you if you're watching this, but I don't know, mate. I, I don't think he can ever be a good Liverpool defender. Already, I'm saying that 20 million pounds. Are, uh, wait, what the fuck did they see in him? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Mate. It's too early to yeah. say. Maybe like it that. is, but it is. He, his positioning that is just. It, we're playing against shit teams, and they're getting behind so easy. Why do we play someone decent? They're gonna smack us with Lovren in defense. Yeah, when you I play against know. the city. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. But Where are you, Kurt? Uh, most disappointing player. Um. Oh, jeez, that's a difficult question. Difficult question. Um, I'm just looking at the top sides. <laughs> I've already said it, lads. I've already said it. It's Ozil. It's Ozil. 42 million. He's going to come to the Premier League. He's going to dominate. Pfft, mate, he's far off the pace. He's he's getting his pants pulled down by... The, the only reason I give him a bit of slack is he's come off a World Cup. But if he's not... Sorry, mate. If he hasn't improved... Sorry, mate. But have you seen every other right. player that came off the World Cup who's dominating? Have a look. Well, yeah, but have a look at Manchester United's Di Maria. He was injured. What? He played in the World Cup. Yeah, I know, but he got a bit more time off than Ozil. Oh, jeez. Okay. No, look, look. If he if he's still playing, <laughs> if he's still playing shit like that for a month, well, fair enough. Mate, but I, I think you're due for an off spell, man. Here and there. But um, but he was he was off spell all the half of last season. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, he was thrashed, but in my opinion. Ah, uh, well, you know, that's just. You know, that's just my opinion about... Yeah, that's fair enough, man. Ozil, I just... I don't know, man. I'm just real disappointed for him. You know, he can't... Obviously, you can't do nothing about the price tag. That's his fault. Yeah. Not his fault. You can't... I understand that. And that's the same... I feel the same way about Di Maria. He can't do nothing about 56 million. It's like, whoa, you know? Yeah. Glad I'm not paying, you know? Mm. But... I hate to compare it, but I have to. You're looking at... Di Maria coming from Real Madrid. You're looking at Özil coming from Real Madrid. Premier mm. League, Premier League. I know uh, um, Di Maria is only a few games in, but Di Maria is beating defenders every time. He is just mate. He they're like they're worlds apart. Yeah, it's it's crazy. 
you know, but I'd have to say biggest disappointment is Ozil. That's fair enough. I think biggest disappointment is how many Arsenal subscribers you're about to lose. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they already know. <laughs> trust me, they've already. <laughs> trust me, I've lost all my Tottenham ones. Don't worry about that. But yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> there's only three of them. <laughs> but Ooh. um. Um, don't worry, you got Danny Wilbeck now, so it's alright. He shits on Ozil anyways. Um, anyways, lad, that's going to wrap up this show. We're about to play some FIFA, because FIFA 15 just dropped. Don't worry about that. I'm sure you guys are too. Take but, a day off, guys. Play FIFA. Yes. But uh, anyways, lads, like always, please get your comments down below. Ask some questions. You guys are probably uh, just itching away already about you know criticism from us. Get your comments down below. Ask some squ- uh, questions for next week. We'll be sure to answer the best questions. So make sure they're half decent and relevant, lads. But like always, lads, say thanks to my guests. Thanks, uh, lads, for coming in. No problem, mate. Sorry we're away for last week as well. We had internationals and a few other things. But until next week, lads, we're the seven show. Take care and peace.